In this video, I'll show you how you can build a custom table of contents using shared actions. So I've made this video before, but it was back before I really started using shared actions. So I thought it would be an interesting experiment to build a custom table of contents feature for your e-learning course using advanced actions, which I then would save as shared actions. We'll see how easy it is to do. Okay, before we start uh, building our custom table of contents feature, let's go over a little bit about what I have here in this particular project here. So I've built out all of the objects that I'll need to make my table of contents. Quite simply, it's just a smart shape to sort of act as a table of contents bar. I've got an icon here, which I'm using as my table of contents button. And I have a grouped object that's made up of five smart shapes, four of which are my buttons, and I've selected those and I'm using them as buttons itself. The reason I've grouped this object, of course, it'll be a lot easier to show and hide it as needed because it's a single object when you group it together like this. I also have a back and next button. And while those are not unusual, if you want the table of contents to close, if it happens to be open, we'll need to come up with a very simple little advanced action for our back and next buttons as well. The rest of my project are just standard slides that represent the first slide of what will be a multi-lesson course. So in this case, we've got four different lessons covered. So let's start here. The first thing we need is we need a table of contents variable, something to keep track of whether the table of contents is open or closed. So let's go into our project dropdown menu and select variables. So I'm going to add a new variable. I'm going to call this TOC underscore open. Its initial value will be zero. So we're going to assume that when you're starting the course, the table of contents is actually closed or not visible. So I'm going to go ahead and hit save and I can go ahead and close my variables window. The first advanced action we need to write is the advanced action for the actual table of contents button here. So let's go to project and we'll go to advanced actions. This is going to be a conditional advanced action, so we need to select the conditional tab. Let's give our advanced action a name. We'll call this toggle underscore TOC. We're going to start by checking the value of our variable. So we're going to say if TOC open is equal to the literal value of zero, this is the default, we're going to do several things. First thing we need to do is we need to update the value of that variable because we are going to be changing it. So we'll assign TOC open with a literal value of one. We're going to change the state of our TOC button. I have an alternate appearance that looks like it's being collapsed. So we're gonna select selected. We're also going to show our table of contents object, which as I said, is a grouped object that I've simply labeled table of contents. Next, I'm going to select all of these actions, make a copy of them and go down to my else statement because this is a toggle. We need to cover the possibility that TOC is already a value of one. So what's going to happen when that's true? We'll go down here, we'll paste this in and we'll just make some small changes. So we're going to assign TOC open back to zero. We're going to change the state of our TOC button to normal. And in this case, we're actually going to hide our table of contents object. So we can save this as an action, click OK and click close. Let's make sure that we're assigning our advanced action that we've just created to the actual button that's here. So we'll go to the actions tab of our TOC button. And rather than using the default on success, go to next slide. 
we'll change that to execute advanced actions. And of course, there's only one advanced action so far, so it's selected by default. Next thing we need to do is we need to write an advanced action for each one of our lessons. Uh, the buttons in the table of contents will need to jump to the appropriate slide, but those actions also need to be supplemented with a few other actions. So we're going to need an advanced action. Now, rather than writing four individual advanced actions, or depending on your course, many dozens of actual advanced actions, we're going to write the first one for lesson one, save it as a shared action, and reuse it for all of our buttons. So let's go ahead and go to the project drop-down menu and start with the advanced action that will be the basis of our shared action. So we'll click on advanced action, and in this case here we'll call it toc underscore button underscore click. So similar to when we're closing the table of contents on our TOC icon, we're going to need to close the table of contents and update the variable. So let's first of all assign our TOC open with a literal value of zero because part of clicking each of these lessons will be to close the table of contents as well. We're also going to hide our table of contents object. We're going to need to return our table of contents icon back to its normal state. So let's change the state of our TOC button back to normal. And the last thing we need to do is to jump to a particular slide. It doesn't really matter what I use here, but in keeping with this being for lesson one, we'll simply jump to slide two in this case here. Now, even though I'm going to save this as a shared action, I do like to save the advanced action as well in the event I need to refer back to it and make an updated version of that shared action. So save as an action, click OK, and now we'll save as a shared action. Now, save as a shared action, we can call it the same thing in this case, that's not a problem. You can provide it a description here that might help you remember how to use the shared action. And then all you need to do is provide a description for each of the action parameters that are available to you. So this first one is referring to our table of contents object. So we'll just say table of contents grouped object to remind us what we're looking for here. The table of contents button. We can add the normal state of that button and the slide you wish to go to, right? So there we go. We're good with that. We'll hit save, click OK, and click close. So now what we can do is we can select lesson one by clicking on the grouped object, then clicking on the lesson one shape as a button. Go to our properties inspector, go to actions, and rather than using the on success action of go to next slide, we're going to execute shared actions. We only have the one, so it comes up by default. And we click on the actions parameter icon and simply fill in the pieces of this shared action parameters. So in this first case here, we're talking about the table of contents object, the TOC button, the normal state of that button, and the slide that we wish to go to. I can save this, and now that's assigned that shared action. I can reuse that shared action for all the remaining buttons. So let's execute shared action, hit the parameters icon. Everything will be the same, except what we'll do is jump to a completely different slide. So in this case, we'll be going to slide number three. Save, and we've just got lesson three and four to do. So execute shared action. TOC button, normal state of that button, and slide number four, save. And we'll do number four as well, lesson four. 
you can see that this saves you a lot of time but it also simplifies things so you don't need to remember a large number of complex steps save and there we go so that takes care of our toggling of our table of contents navigating to the other slides we also have a back and next button to consider because if I've opened the table of contents but I decide to just simply click the next button I do want the table of contents to close so I can't do that with a single action so I'll need to write an advanced action for back and next that I can use throughout my course so let's go into the project drop down menu go to advanced actions and we'll do our TOC open back button and kind of like the um, the else portion of our toggle table of contents we need to do a few things like assign TOC open with a literal value of zero we're going to change the state of our TOC button itself back to normal and we're going to hide our table of contents object itself lastly we're going to go to the previous slide okay so i can save this as an action click ok before i leave here let's duplicate it because the forward button will be using almost an identical advanced action so we'll duplicate that we'll call this toc open next and all we need to do is change this to go to next slide we'll update that action click ok click close let's assign those advanced actions to our back and next button so we'll simply execute advanced actions and toc open back is fine and we'll do the same thing for the next button open next and actually what I can do now is to simply copy these back and next buttons to all of my subsequent slides so they'll perform the same function there we go returning to slide one now I've shown you how to build this table of contents object on a single slide how do I make this work on every single slide in my course that part's actually really easy I'm going to select all the objects that make up my table of contents menu go to the timing panel and rather than have this appear for the rest of the slide I'm going to have it appear for the rest of the project making sure that place objects on top is selected so that it's over top of any objects on those subsequent slides the other thing I need to just double check is that my table of contents object starts off not visible in output which it is and I think we're pretty much good to go here let's preview this in HTML5 in browser so here we are on our actual slide one this could be an introduction slide or a title slide or something like that and there's our table of contents icon there let's open up the table of contents you'll see that the TOC icon is changed to a collapse icon and of course I've got four different lessons I can jump to if I simply click next it goes to lesson one and automatically closes my table of contents which is exactly what I wanted let's click it again and now select lesson two so it takes us to lesson two it closes the table of contents and of course I can continue to use the table of contents to navigate to any point in my course that I wish if you thought this video was useful please like and share it with your colleagues if you need help with Adobe Captivate hire Paul for one-on-one -on -one instruction Paul's goal is to focus on lessons based on your specific need visit his website at captivateteacher.com and don't forget to subscribe to his YouTube channel